Hello, this is uh, Faith at um, Faith and Books, and I'm doing my review of Joe's Boys by Louisa May Alcott. Uh, that was the book for this month for, for the uh, challenge, A Year with Louisa May, which is hosted by Kate Howe and Megan Hamet. So um, this is the third book in sort of a trilogy. Uh, it starts with Little Women, then Little Men is when Joe and, and Professor Bear have a, a school for boys and a couple of girls called Plumfield Academy. And then this is a follow-up to that. So you get to see what happens to all those characters that you're introduced to in um, Little Men, as well as the continuing characters of Mr. March and Lori and Amy and Meg. So, uh, so let's see, all the kids that are involved that you really learn about are, um, let's see, Meg had uh, Demi and Daisy, the twins, and then Josie is their youngest daughter. And then um, Joe has Franz and Emile, who are Professor Bear's nephews. And then she has two boys of her own, Rob and Ted. And then... Um, and then Amy has Bess, and then there are the boys that were in Plumfield Academy. So Dan, he's the most interesting character, I think. And then Nat, and Nan, um, and then there's, am I missing anybody? Well, and then there's two other kind of minor characters who, um, Stuffy and um, Dolly, short for Dolphus. Is there anybody else? There's a couple other new characters that come in, but are sort of minor. Anyway, so you get to see them, you know, in Little Men, they were young, young, much younger, and now they're college age, and Mr. Lawrence has founded a college, and a lot of them are going to that, and it's co-ed. And I guess Plumfield Academy hasn't taken in new students because Mrs. Joe, um, has taken to writing novels, so it's very much like Louisa May Alcott's actual life. Um, and so there's a very funny scene in the book where she talks about people, her fans of her books coming and pestering her and wanting to meet her, and she's busy trying to get things done. She doesn't really want to meet the, her adoring public. Uh, that was a really funny part of the book. Um, anyway, it's sort of like just vignettes to, to tell you, to catch you up on, on how they've grown. And so you learn about, you know, their romances, who they wind up with and or don't wind up with, and what careers they're going to um, take to, and uh, their moral struggles that they might be having, the flaws, how, how they're coping with the flaws in their personalities, and that sort of thing. So it's it's an interesting book. It's it's um, parts are really funny. My I think my favorite part was with Josie when she... Uh, she's vacationing with the Lawrences and they happen to be next to a famous actress who's also vacationing and Josie wants to be an actress and she adores this woman who's a famous woman of the stage and uh, she gets to meet her and, and that's really, um, that's a fun one. And then they put on a play that Mrs. Joe has written at the college. That, that's, that was a really fun chapter too. Anyway, it's an interesting book. You get to follow up. Emile has quite an adventure. Dan is a tragic figure. Um, um, you know, and some of the other storylines are, there's a lot of moralizing, a lot of lecturing. Um, and I don't know. And some of it was interesting. Like she, um, Louise May Alcott mentions um, feminists, you know, really early feminists who were suffragists. And that sort of thing. So that was kind of interesting. There was one point where they talked about whether they liked George Eliot or Charlotte Bronte better. Mrs. Joe liked Bronte better. I have to say I disagree with her. I, the Brontes only go so far with me, whereas I really, really admire George uh, George Eliot. But um, anyway, so it, it was fun that way. Um, it, I... The problem that I have with this book and where I, I think it's my least favorite of the three is that, I mean, this is a reread for me. I read this aloud to my daughter, my youngest daughter, like six or seven years ago. But I mean, how old is she now? She's eight, she's almost 19. So I, you know, probably when she was 11. So maybe more than that. Um, but, um, so the, my, the problem was, 
that two things kind of cast a pall over this book for me. I'm also reading The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, and I've just gotten to the really horrendous part where they're talking about the final solution. And, um, and, and But in this book, Louise May Alcott is very, very infatuated with German culture. So she's always, you know, the way she presents it and she keeps talking about, she has this very rosy view of it. And of course there's, you know, Professor Bear himself is, is quite lovable. So, um, but I, I, it was so jarring because I'm reading that and then when I, I look at what I'm reading and I'm thinking, just wait 50 years, Louisa May Alcott, you'll see what your German culture came to. But... You know, I don't know. It just and I, and I looked up like the 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 dates, and this is when she's writing this. This is when nationalism is becoming a big thing. Wagner is popular. I know Brahms, who was against anti-Semitism, um, spoke out about how worried he was about German culture because there was so much anti-Semitism. Um, you know, I don't know. It was. It, it, it was really jarring to be reading like the most horrible, demonic, depraved brutality and then and then go to Louise May Alcott and she's talking about how, you know, the, the lovely German women who are so... And at the same time, um, I, I kept remembering that my... And I can't remember if this was in um, Outcast of Eden. Please, somebody who read that book, tell me if this was mentioned in there that Louisa May Alcott infamously wrote this column where she said she agreed with the no Irish need apply and she out and out states that the Irish are an inferior race. Um, and so for all her, you know, proto-feminism and, and, you know, wanting abolition and all that stuff, she, she wasn't immune to the racism that, that was going on at the time. And so the fact that I knew that she didn't like the Irish, uh, she thought they were an inferior race, and she's so uh, infatuated with the German culture, just when the, this, you know, it's when the anti-immigrant movement really was taking off the, at the end of the century. Um, um, and, the, and then reading about the, I, I don't know, I just, it really made me not enjoy the book quite as much as maybe I would have. Um, so I think it's my least favorite. But I mean, it's if you don't think about that, uh, it, you know, it's a nice uh, follow-up, and and there's a lot of pleasant stuff in it. It's there's a lot of moralizing though, which is what she does. I mean, that's what she does in this book in these books. Um, uh, but for it, it didn't settle so well for me. Anyway, so that's my review of Joe's Boys. I'm looking forward to next month, or next month, this month, to uh, reading Eight Cousins because I do not believe I've read that one before. And it would, these, the um, Little Women and Little Men and Joe's Boys were all rereads for me. So I would like to strike out into new territory with Louise May. Um, so anyway, so that's my review and I will talk to you later. Bye.